Let's go! It's the L.A. Football Podcast. Touchdown Ram! Recovered by the Chargers. Touchdown UCLA! With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Zyrood. On the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. All right, Los Angeles, what's going on? Welcome back to the Believe in LA Football podcast here on LAFBnetwork.com, also on the Believe Podcast Network. I am Ryan Dyrud, co-host of the show with the great Frosty Rucker. Frost, what's going on, man? What's going on? What's going on, LA? Can't wait. Football is back. We are yeah. what, a day away from a, an actual live game happening. It's an absolute countdown at this point. Yeah, it's you know great. I mean? and I'm starting to get sweaty palms a little bit, you know, and getting hyped. Can't wait, you know. I'm sure these guys are just ecstatic, you know, with all this uncertainty going on, just getting out of training camp, who's there, who's not. But now they get the lock in. Yeah, guys, exactly. What, what's it like for you being a player now that's going to year two of retirement? Do you, st- do you get that itch Wish you were out there? Or are, you, are you at peace saying, you know what, I, I'm excited just to be able to be a fan now and watch this? You know, what's weird about it, last year, I wasn't even that excited as I am now. Last year, I think I was mentally trying to prepare myself to, like, don't let it affect you. Mm-hmm. You'll get through it. You know, this is your first time in 28 years at that point that I didn't play uh, football in the fall. Um, but this year, you know, it's just the anticipation of not having sports for so long and, you know, them getting to training camp and, you know, starting this new venture um, on the L.A. Football uh, Podcast. You know, it, it's, it's helping me. You know, and I, I want to play. Yeah. And to be completely honest, yeah. I, I have like two series left in me. <laughs> well, you've been out on the field, you know, with kids and stuff. So you're, you're always around it. And yeah, I'm sure you got that itch again. But hopefully, Absolutely. We, can, hopefully we can uh, indulge that at least with watching and talking about it. So uh, well, we got a great show for you today. Chargers fans, uh, we have Gilbert Manzano of the OC Register Chargers Rewriter join us to help us break down this Chargers Bengals game. So we'll get to that in just a second. But before we do, as we mentioned, the wait's finally over. Football's finally back. And just because fans can't be there doesn't mean that you cannot bet on the, ge- bet on the game with our friends at Bet Online. So from game, fre- game spreads, totals to team and player and coaching prop bets, Prop bets are always fun. Bet online gives you more options to wager than any place online. There's always the online casino if for some reason you don't want to bet on football. But we suggest you do that. So head over to betonline.ag today and take advantage of all the great sign-up bonuses. Again, that's betonline.ag and sign up today. BetOnline, your online sportsbook experts. All right, Frosty. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into this interview with Gilbert Manzano. All right, back again on the L.A. Football Podcast. He is the beat writer for the Chargers for the Orange County Register, Gilbert Manzano, my man. Welcome back. How you doing? Doing well. As you can tell, right, I'm hiding here in a dungeon somewhere uh, in Chargers headquarters, but I'm glad to be back on the show with you on Fro- Frosty. Dude, hey, but crazy. he's all access, Ryan. <laughs> That's right. Last time you were on the show, you were in your, your bare-walled bedroom of your apartment yeah, quarantined, yeah. and now you're at Chargers uh, facility. Yeah, I'm still locked in a cave, kind of, but I am out and about, so you're right, Ryan. That's an upgrade. That's an upgrade. Gilbert, so, I got a question for you. Were you yeah. able to leave during training camp or were you confined into the bubble? No, I, actually, I was able to leave. It was kind of weird. Like, once I go into the, the training camp, uh, you know, I get a temperature check. You got to wear your mask. But once I leave, I, I was free to go whenever I want. Not like I'm crazy or reckless. I'm not going to the pool or, or a beach party, you know. <laughs> uh, but, but so far, you know, they were okay with it. I, I think, you know, right now, being back in the, in the building, the player is like, a few feet away from me, you know, watching film. So I got, I got to do, I guess, the best I can to stay away from the players. That's a little awkward, but for the most part, once I leave the facility, it's been okay and kind of okay. normal. Yeah, well, that's a good question. Cool. So you guys, as the media, you just got temperature checks. You didn't have to be, like, tested every day like the players? No, you know what? I think what it was because we're outdoors, and they also didn't want to limit the, I guess, the reporters to, to 10, I think it was. Yeah. They just said, hey, we'll be out in an open space. You know, come at your own discretion. You know, it's on you. Yeah. Uh, but bring your mask, uh, you know, get, you know, you know, wash your hands, uh, get a temperature check. Uh, but no testing so far. So I didn't have to go through the nose swab. I think I saw the Raiders reporters how to do it. Uh, yeah. you know, mm. I feel bad for them. Uh, <laughs> but in a way, it's kind of like, 
reassuring that you're a little safe and you know what's going on. So I haven't had that. So hopefully I'm okay for week one status. Hopefully I'm okay. It might be the, a day to day. So you'll be uh, but, doubtful or you yeah, I could be doubtful. I could be downgraded by the time Saturday rolls around. So it would be nice to have a test to know I'm okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, they got plenty of those all around you can get. So that's cool. <laughs> I mean, what in general, just off the bat, camp, we, we see it on hard knocks. We've heard a bunch, but how different has camp been? Because you're at camp every year. I saw you there last year. Unfortunately, we won't be able to be there because like you said, they're limiting so much media. What's camp been like? Has it been super, super different or has it actually felt pretty streamlined? You know, watching practices felt normal because you know on a regular year we're always you know you know away from the field kind of far away anyways you have to you know walk around the edges of the fences mm -hmm. kind of watch and pick and choose what field you want to go to you want to watch the offense you got to go for like a long walk to see uh justin herbert and tyra taylor so that was kind of normal the weird part was after they were done they needed to you know we needed to talk to them so it was like a weird zoom podium where they kind of walked away you know 50 yards away from the field and then we went out to our own little tent area and we all got on our laptops like I'm doing right now. And we just started talking like the same way we're doing now. And, and the weird thing was there's speakers out there. So you hear like a weird echo or <laughs> somebody has like a bad mic. It, it, and then they made a weird noise and you're kind of like, oh, what's going on here? Uh, but other than that, the weird interviews, it was okay to watch what I needed to see to kind of you know write a, a, a daily notebook of who's doing well, who's doing mm -hmm. not doing well. Uh, so other than that, it was okay. Was yeah. There was a lot of battles that you were expected to play out the way they did or was there anything give us some juice come on gilbert give us some stuff we couldn't yeah, you go know what i'm very surprised about the the number three wide receiver job uh I didn't bring that, up. I didn't that job uh i thought they were kind of maybe bluffing they wanted to put in just somebody who has experience because it's a weird year they familiar with Jalen, second year guy but didn't have a reception a year ago so he was in the practice squad but from day one to the end, the last day of camp, he was with the number ones. So he was with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams until Mike Williams got hurt. Uh, but Jalen got in. They kept saying they wanted speed. They wanted somebody fast to take the top off the defense. They wanted a deep threat. And, and Anthony Allen was not bluffing. He didn't care who you were from, from a KJ Hill to a Joe Reed mm -hmm. uh, to anybody else. He wanted speed. Doesn't care if you were running a good route. He wants speed because uh, he already has route runners with, Mike, with Keenan Allen and, and Mike Williams as well. Uh, so that kind of surprised me, you, you know, the chemistry there with Tyrod Taylor and Jalen, I didn't see it too much. I saw it with K.J. Hill, and, and that guy could flat out play. He, he gets open. He's a playmaker. He doesn't have the speed. But I think that just kind of just shows you what the Chargers are, are, are really looking for, and that surprised me, uh, you know, a, a lot. And another thing, maybe it wasn't too much surprising, but I'm surprised how good Joshua Kelly was. I heard good things about Joshua Kelly, but – he, he, was, he was great from, from day one. I think he started out with the third team, and by the, by the third or fourth day, he was with the ones, nice. and there went back down. So Joshua Kelly came as advertised, maybe even better, uh, but those two things really stood out to me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, always rooting for guys like that. Totally. Yeah, from UC Davis to transferring to being a walk-on and now being in his hometown with the Chargers, that's, that's a very great story. Oh, it's awesome, man. He was, I thought he was so under – obviously, we covered him last year at UCLA, but I thought he was underrated coming out into the draft, so it's good to see him uh, doing well. And you mentioned the, the receivers, and I, you know, I, I could see, totally see K.J. Hill playing himself into a, a bigger role as the season progresses, but you mentioned White, Mike Williams. What can you tell us about his injury status? I know he's questionable. I know they're probably keeping it pretty close to the vest, but how's he looking for, for week one? Yeah, it's a little weird. They're very optimistic about Mike Williams playing week one. Uh, I've seen him out with a jersey and jogging you know, and being on, on the rehab field and kind of doing some, some things here and there. You know, it's a shoulder thing, so you can run around. Uh, but can he catch the ball? Can he extend? Can, you know, can he do all the things that Mike Williams is, you know, known of doing? I don't know if he's ready for that uh, come uh, Sunday against the Bengals. Uh, but the OC, Shane Steichen, the head coach, Anthony Lang, they keep saying he's a game-time decision. Uh, they feel very good about it. I think Shane Steichen even said, I look forward to seeing him on September 13th. Maybe mm -hmm. on the sidelines, not having a jersey on. I don't know what he <laughs> yeah. meant by that. There's a little push, like, come on, buddy. Yeah. We need yeah, you. Hey, Mike, you get ready, all right? Uh, but I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't see it. Maybe it's a little too soon. And if Mike Williams is not out there, then you start seeing some of those young guys, uh, Joe Reed and K.J. Hill. Uh, of course, Jalen Guyton's role increases. But uh, after Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, those three guys I just mentioned, K.J., Joe, and Jalen, they don't have any career receptions in the NFL. So, you're asking a lot from those guys to kind of step on week, uh, week one. Well, I mean, this, this season is going to be something that we've never seen. So why not, you know, if you got to depend on these young guys to get these valuable reps and get these, you know, their first career everything, 
why not this season, you know? Yeah, and you don't even have a preseason. You know, they had one scrimmage. It wasn't even at SoFi Stadium. So you're kind of just throwing these guys into the fire. And like you said, Frosty, you, you got to live and learn. So why not throw them out there? Yeah. One little tidbit, though. KJ Hill going back to his home state, or at least where he played college ball. So maybe he uh, shows out. Won't have any family in the stands, but maybe he'll uh, show out for all the people watching on TV. Yeah, maybe. You know what? You know, guys from – obviously, it's Ohio State, the Ohio State. They have a strong following. Anytime I tweet mm -hmm. about KJ Hill – you know, they come and support KJ, so they really want to see him out there. So uh, hopefully he's out there, and I'll tweet about good things about KJ so I get a bunch of retweets and likes it because they really support that guy. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I mean, most receptions in Ohio State history with all those great receivers, so what's not to, what not to love about him? But, uh, you know, looking at the defense a little bit, obviously everyone knows about the horrible injury to Derwin James. Feel for that guy. Another big loss to the Chargers defense. But how's Nasir Adderley looked going into year two? How is, you know, Rayshon Jenkins, who will kind of fill in there? How's the safety unit look at this point heading into week one? You know, it, it, you got to feel for Derwin James to, to lose, a, you know, a season, back-to-back -back season. I think he's going to miss about 27 games out of 32. It's just brutal. Mm. Uh, but I think the Chargers kind of learned their lesson from a year ago that you can't rely on one guy that much because Derwin James did it all 2018. He was a guardian of the best tight end. He was, a, you know, being a pass rusher. He was, you know, you know playing pass coverage deep. Uh, he was doing everything he wanted. And then once he went down last year, the first 11 games, you saw how they were lacking playmakers. They were lacking depth. They, were, they just needed more bodies. You can't, you can't ask a guy to do, do it all for you. So they brought in guys like Nazir, who was a second-year guy, but he was injured last year. And mm -hmm. Nazir Adderley was a second-round pick in 2019. And they were kind of hoping he'll be like this number two to Derwin James. And we're not going to see that anytime soon. But him being healthy, he's out there. He's making plays. He, he has a knack for, for, for creating turnovers just sniffing out the ball. Uh, so you have him this year. Uh, you add in like a guy like uh, Chris Harris Jr. I know he's a cornerback, but you add depth. You add playmakers, a guy who could, you know, play uh, in the nickel and on the outside. Now you can move Desmond King to a safety spot. Now you have a little more depth there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned Rayshon Jenkins. A year ago, they really want him to be a free safety. I think they kind of learned their lesson that you need to have these guys cross-train and, and, and be able to play both strong and free. And Rayshon has experience playing strong. Uh, but I noticed in training camp before Durin went down, they were they were using him a lot at the line of scrimmage. They wanted Rayshon Jenkins to be comfortable back moving from, from free to strong. So I think for week one, you're going to see Rayshon be the strong safety. Uh, maybe at the end, they might name the starter today. Uh, but I think it might be Rayshon at strong and Nazir at free safety to start out week one. Like it, yeah. Looks good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Hopefully you know, Nazir has a big year. I know he was looking so good coming out of Delaware, so it'll be fun to, fun to watch him. Uh, him. Right. Yeah, finally battle out there and hopefully god forbid stay healthy um you know before gilbert we go transition into kind of like previewing this game with the Bengals. uh was there any surprise cuts to you I, I think it was pretty chalk when i looked at it from what i was expecting but was there any surprise cuts uh for you with the chargers you know um, well actually the, the fullbacks i was surprised about the fullbacks you know Anthony, guys, right? yeah he, he, he's known for keeping fullbacks and, and being old school uh, and then you, but it was weird because they had two type of fullbacks. Uh, uh, Gabe Neighbors was a former uh, tight end of Florida State, so he's versatile. And then you got Bobby Holly, who's kind of this strong ox guy, your old school blocking <laughs> fullback. So you had a little bit of everything. And it's kind of just maybe they couldn't decide who they wanted. Uh, but I think it was more for them to be flexible. Uh, keep one on the practice squad. You look at the matchups on, the, on a weekly basis. If you need a fullback, you could bring up Gabe. Uh, but now you, act, you keep an extra tight end. Uh, maybe a tight end could be a fullback. I don't know if uh, Steven, Steven Anderson, who's known for blocking, could do that a little bit. Uh, you got Donald, Donald Parham Jr. from the XFL, who, who really stood out. Uh, but not having a fullback really surprised me. They had Derek Watt a year ago. Uh, but that kind of tells me that they're going to be very, uh, you know, I guess they're going to change a lot, this offense. I know Anthony Allen keeps telling me, you know, we had a pandemic. There wasn't a lot of practice time. So we can't really change too much. But I think coming you know, on week one or week two, you're going to see a whole, a whole different look with Tyrod Taylor and the Chargers. Very interesting because I was uh, thinking about the fullback position, thinking about we got these three running backs that they're going to be carrying the load together. Um, like you said, receiver down. You got new guys and fresh new guys trying to play. I thought they're going to rely on the run, and it's almost like the opposite, you know, because uh, if you got a fullback, tight end, swing guy, he can play the Y, the, you know, and the H, and – you know, you do your split zones and whatnot, but I thought they were going to be heavy run this year, but looks a little different. You know, maybe it could be kind of one of those things where they just want to have a lot of these motions and trickeration and just deceiving teams or just moving guys in and out. 
Uh, and then you look at that right side, you keep running behind Brian Bulaga and Trey Turner and maybe hopefully Mike Pounce is healthy. Maybe they feel confident they don't need a fullback. That's what uh, I was thinking. I mean, yeah. they do got a strong old line on that right side. Well, the whole line to me looks very strong, but you know, needing that fullback was something that I was counting on. And when they cut both of them, I, I, I was shocked. <laughs> Yeah, but I think you'll see Gabe Neighbors come up up and down a lot. So I think I think they're kind of you know thinking what you're thinking. Uh, but maybe they just couldn't. I don't think they could decide between the tight end. I mean the tight yeah tight ends. There were four of them, and they were yeah. probably thinking we wanted three. And then wait, these guys are all good. I got we got to do something here. So I think that's probably what kind of what kind of happened. Yeah, it was cool to see them keep both XFL LA or not both LA Wildcats, but Parnham played for the Renegades and yeah. Storm Norton, who me and you we hung out the digs all XFL season watching him. So I was pumped to see. Then both make it. Uh, before we move on to the preview, I'm curious, Gail, how many times have you used the word trickeration on an OC <laughs> Register article? Actually, kind of often because people keep asking me how, how to describe this new offense without Philip Rivers. I'm like, uh, it's going to be very tricky, trickeration. I kind of made it up. I didn't know it was a word, but I love it. <laughs> I actually, I, I don't know. Actually, I got to look, look at it. But it's, nobody's caught me, at, caught me or called me out on that like you, Ryan. So I'm going to do my research and make sure okay. I'm using it right. But I, I think the question. is better. You know, yeah. <laughs> just roll with it. What do you think? <laughs> Question before the preview. So, like you just said, Phillips gone. How's the team rallied behind these new two quarterbacks that are seamlessly been battling it out with a you know a first round pick? And how's that transition going? Is the team rallied the O line? Because that was a lot of years by Phillips. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes it could be awkward in a locker room. You have a quarterback competition. Some guys are going this way. Some guys are going the other way. Uh, but I think Anthony did a good job of establishing right away that this is Tyrod Taylor's team. He's going to be the starter. He didn't care that Cam Lewin was out there as a free agent. He said Tyrod Taylor was a guy. He stuck to his word. And I think people kind of, you know, they saw that. And they, and they, he also said Justin Herbert's going to, you know, it's going to be a wait and see developmental project. You don't mm -hmm. want to rush a guy. And so far they've stuck to their guns. And I think maybe that's kind of helped the team to, to gravitate towards Tyrod Taylor. And, 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 you know, this is our guy. This is our leader. We've got to rally because he's, he's not going anywhere in 2020 at least. Uh, but I think so far it's been okay with the leadership stuff. Uh, you, you do miss, you know, Philip Rivers. You did have Derwin James for a little bit. He's, he's a very a guy who's, who you want to, you know, you feed off of. But you have guys like Trey Turner and Brian Bulaga, veteran guys that came in, Linval Joseph, Chris Harris Jr. So you added a guys who have won Super Bowls and been team captains. And I think today we'll find out who the team captains are going to be. Melvin Ingram might be one of those guys. So I think you have plenty of leadership uh, after Philip Rivers. Yeah, and, and Tyrod seems just such like a natural leader anyway and a lead by – example not not necessarily the most vocal but uh even just seeing on hard knocks what he's doing putting in work before anyone's there so easy to gravitate towards a guy like that i'm a huge fan of his i yeah. uh, hated playing against him because it'll light you up he could run he could pass he can do it all but mm, as a player watching film and being on the outside looking in um everyone I've, I've heard that played with him and talked to they love him so i'm glad the team's gelling towards that and like you said coach lynn you know putting that out there at the, the start so guys wouldn't be wavering in a competition that Tyron's our guy and we're going to bring the other guy slowly along. And I think that'll, that'll play off good. Yeah, absolutely. So week one matchup with the Bengals, 105 kickoff in L.A. here, playing against the Cincinnati Bengals. Frosty's former team who drafted Frosty. Yeah. Uh, Gilbert, what, uh, what matchups, I guess, are you looking for? I know me and Frosty were talking off air that the trenches are going to be interesting, O-line, D-line. Um, but are there any matchups you're kind of looking for in this game for the Chargers to come out on top? Can I avoid the easy one with Joe Burrow or should I kind of go somewhere else? <laughs> you can, no. It's your time. Do whatever you want. You know, you know for me, it, it's Joe Mixon, the running back. When, when you haven't had a preseason game or a joint scrimmage and you got to bring down a, a guy like Joe Mixon without any live action really or, you know, or being physical or tackling out there. Because once, you know, these injuries pile up for the Chargers with Mike Williams and Derwin James, Anthony Lynn toned it down. He's like, okay, that's it. We're not going to risk it here. So I think once, once you see, you know, Joe Mixon getting a handoff, you know, every other play, and you got to tackle that guy, and, and he's gonna, they're going to tire you. Can the defense, you know, up top in the front seven handle that, you know, kind of a, a bruising back? And then also on the flip side for the, for the Chargers, you got three guys there, Joshua Kelly, Justin Jackson, Austin Eckler. And it depends on who's going to be who's, – who's well-conditioned, who's going to, you know, you know mm -hmm. be out there to survive the, 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 you know, the, how physical it's going to be week one without any preseason games. So that's what I'm looking forward to. But obviously, Joe Burrow, I got to go back to that because the number one overall pick who had a great year at LSU, what can you do against Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram, Casey Hayward, uh, Chris Harris Jr., uh, Kenneth Murray, the rookie? There's a lot of talent on that defense without Derwin James. Just run fast, run away. Yeah, yeah run fast. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a lot of pressure for the rookie. 
I know he was great, but to see what what Gus Bradley could you know scheme up against him will be will be fun to watch. Yeah, I, I say the same thing, Ryan. We talked before you got on, and uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a battle because I feel like both D lines are the strong points of the teams, but without the added preseason games and there's gonna be a lot of soft tissue issues that you don't now have. Oh, he can sit out a week or two of camp. No, we're in, right in the games, so. Football is going to be tricky. This game is going to be intriguing for me. Um, no fans. Um, it's going to be very serious, it seems like. Um, I'm, I'm excited. Are, are you going to make the trip or are you, you're not going? No, unfortunately, no. As of now, I, we're not planning on me to travel. I guess my editors and I discussed it. I, I know a lot of people feel the same way. That it's, I guess it's too risky to travel right now. I know a few are going, but you don't really get out of it too much. You're going to be on Zoom regardless. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you got a better better view on uh, on TV and hearing the announcers, uh, but I am a little disappointed. I won't be out there to, to you know to watch this Chargers defense against Joe Burrow you know up close and personal. Uh, but, but as of now, I'm not going to travel. Uh, I think the only one I might make it to is Vegas because it's a car drive and it also it's Vegas. If you want to get out there, uh, <laughs> but I'll be at all the home home games and uh, hopefully the Vegas one for now. Absolutely, yeah. Maybe we'll be there too. So, uh, <laughs> Gilbert, I'll get you out of here on this, unless Frosty had anything else. But uh, talking to Gilbert Manzano with the OC Register Chargers beat writer. Um, so, yeah, last question, and it's kind of going back to the offensive line. Sam Tevy, maybe to the chagrin of fans or the surprise, named as a starting left tackle. Um, but he'll go up against a really formidable pass rusher in, in Carlos Dunlap, who's going for 100 sacks this year. Um, what do you make of Sam Tevy's camp, and do you think he's up for the, up for the challenge this year? Yeah, it's going to be tough because he, he was very shaky at, at the right right tackle spot. He's very athletic. You know, he, he has good feet, uh, but he was very inconsistent the, the last couple of years. And for the Chargers to move him now to, to, the, to the left side, I know the right side and the left side are kind of the same now because you have pass rushes moving, you know, both sides. You kind of flip them a lot. Uh, but just, just to ask Sam Tegu to do that, especially for the first game, it might be a little bit of a struggle, but Anthony Allen loved his camp. He told me, hey, you know, he got better as camp went on. And that was one of those competitions that never took place because Sam Tavey was, I guess, uh, uh, above everybody else, like Trey Pipkins and maybe even Forrest Lamp. Uh, but he earned the job. He won it. He gets a shot week one. I don't know if it's permanent, but he's going to get a shot out there. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be a fascinating section to watch altogether with those left tackles because the right side obviously is secure for the year left side will watch a little closely or so gilbert you're the man always fun talking to you you know your stuff do a great job and i can't wait to have you on again uh, throughout the season so thanks so much thank you ryan frusty uh, hopefully nice i'm on here you. again appreciate you guys absolutely yeah i always like talking to beat writers um you know i don't know if you you know this but i got two awards for being media guy of the year uh, when i played for the the cardinals and the raiders i did not so know that. there's a little frosty fun fact for everyone. There we go. Frosty fun fact. Did not know that. So you do love the media. Don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not too bad. But, you know, these guys are in depth. You know, they got a tough job to do. They got to report the good, bad, and the ugly. And um, they do it with class. And they got to be very respectful. And, you know, usually they're in people's faces. But thank goodness, COVID's here. So they're not in everyone's faces. And, you know, tugging at them to get them to do all these interviews. And they didn't have a chance to. But getting a real in-depth look at how training camp finished going into week one. Um, thanks for Gilbert coming on. Yeah, it's probably making a lot of these media people have to be a little more respectful how they go about interviews because you can't even come close to contact with someone. But, but yeah, Gilbert's one of the best. Love the guy. Uh, worked with him a lot too uh, during the XFL. I think we mentioned it during the interview, but uh, so got to know him well. So he does good work, but excited about this Chargers matchup. Um, I think it's going to be a fun one. Uh, I think the Chargers are the better team on paper at least, um, but who knows, like we've talked about extensively for weeks with no live bullets, no no live hitting, you know, we had, what, one practice of actual live reps. Um, so who knows once uh, people start hitting each other what these teams will actually look like. But I like the matchup. I like uh, Chargers defensive line against the, the Bengals offensive line, which we talked about. And uh, we'll really see how this offense kind of clicks with Tyrod Taylor, with uh, the basically new set of running backs, with uh, some questions at receivers. So a lot of things different for this offense, but the defense should be, you know, business as usual and should uh, really come out and dominate and play well against the Bengals, I think. Yeah, um, big challenge for the Chargers. Um, I think setting the tone week one, but being on the road, so out of your element a little bit. Um, obviously, this preseason was um, second to none, meaning with no preseason games, no no time to get these valuable reps for guys. And um, I like the Chargers. I, I really do. I like I like the the way it, it all measures up with Tyron being an experienced quarterback going into this situation. But, you know, the – 
the real um, bullseye or circle that's going to be on someone is Joe Burrow, you know, making his first start in his home state, first overall pick. Um, Battling versus a really great defensive line that the Chargers have. And um, I know they all can't wait to get a chance. And I think Bosa was one of his teammates at one point. And now, Mm -hmm. look at him now, you know. Um, This is a great one. And I, but I am taking the Chargers. Yeah, I think I am too. So looking forward to that. So it will be a fun game. Can't wait to talk to everyone during the game. So make sure to follow us on the socials. We'd love to chat. Frosty, where can everyone find you at? You can find me at The Organic Frost or you can email me at frostypodcast at yahoo.com. Yahoo. Perfect. I am Ryan Dyrud, LAFB. You can email me at podcast at LAFB Network. Dot com. Make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you listen. We'll be doing two to three shows every week with your previews, recaps, player interviews, all that fun stuff. We are everywhere you listen. Video content also on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Frosties, always a pleasure. Thank you for jumping on with me. And uh, thank you all listening out there. And uh, hopefully talk to you all on uh, Sunday, on game day. Yeah. See you guys.